Hi friends, welcome to Tutors Funny Channel. Today I am going to teach Spring Boot with React using login form and registration form. Login form with Ash password. How to go the more security login page? Okay. How to make step by step using Spring Boot with front end application React. Now here I am going to. You can see here this is the our login for age. If I am going to register new user, so you have to register. Right. Register. I am going to new employee name Sam. Email address I am going to type as Sam at gmail dot com. Password I am going to type one two three. This is the user I am going to register. Click save button. Employee register successfully. Now you go here and this is your database of the Spring Boot. Here the Sam. This is your employee name Sam. Email address. You can see here this is the Ash password which will be displayed. The Ash password, the Spring Secure, right? Now I'm going to go to log in the user. It's also the the route. What's the email? The right Sam at gmail dot com. Right. You have to type first time wrong password. Click log in. Incorrect email or password. If the email address also you have typed wrongly, email not exists. If you type the correct Password and with email address, click login. You will be able to login. Right. This system how to do step by step will teach. I'm going to uh, type Spring Boot, Spring Initializer. You get it. This one. Click on this. Here, this is the here where we have configured our project. So first, we have to click on the. Maven project Maven. I need Maven with Java language Java. So here Spring Boot application just set it as this one default. We uh, select as it is right. So here uh, Spring Boot here we have to uh, group. I have set it here as uh, example right here name only we have given here as uh, we just give the name here as log registration login register login. I give the name. Right. So here, this is the package. Com example register log. Okay. Here, this one should be eight. Java eight. I have installed in our machine Java eight. Here, here, if you are install, I have recommended the Java eight is a stable version. You have download them. Right. And install them. After that, you have set the dependency. Click add dependency. Here, first I am going to add the dependency as JPA. Second one, I am going to add it here as web. Sorry, web we no need then. Uh, JPA second one should be MySQL. We need a MySQL. Uh, here we have to add as a web as well. Okay, we, we need this one also well. After that we have security. Uh, security Spring security this one as well. This all the dependency we need here. Need there, right. After that click generated. Now we have here the file will be downloaded. Now we have to configure that. Right, we have to open open on the uh, Intel GI. So here go show. I just cut off this one. Back to my F drive. Here I'm going to paste it. Right click, extract file. Click OK. Right now the application is this one. Now this one I will open on the Intel GI. Idea. So go to the Intel GI. You have to open them. Open. Where we have put it? Put it as F drive. Which name is registration and login. So when you open the file, be careful how to open. I'll be teach you. Okay, so here what's the name? Registration. Register login. Here. Don't open. Click and open. Okay, so don't open this way. Here inside this folder, we are expanding inside the folder where there is a folder which is created by created login register login. Click on this folder and open it. Okay, the, uh, I have opened right trust project. Uh, I'm going to open a new window. I'll go through that uh, project guidance so that I open on the new terminal. So here you have to wait that they here so all the dependencies get installed. You don't do anything else. It will be getting the whatever dependency you have put it here on the form dot XML. So all the dependency will be configuring here. Yeah, dependency here. So don't close it. You have to wait until the dependency get installed. After install them, you have you can have this folder. Okay, here 
all the dependencies get all them you will be able to expand it this is your project here go to the form.xm here you all the dependencies is installed here you can see here whatever dependency are selected here jpa and uh, security and uh, web mysql connector these are the dependencies you have, you have selected okay the security must be we select as a select uh, login this one okay we have security is needed this dependency also needed right so if you want to add the another dependencies if you are forgot to add the dependencies over here how to add the dependencies you have type uh, whatever your mysql okay In, okay i I, uh, I take the example of mysql if you are forget forgotten to uh, add the dependencies so how to get them maven you have type mbn mysql sorry mbn not mbbn it goes to the dependency it goes to the respective dependency page mysql connect here here you can get the version right so you just get don't get the new one latest one you have to get at this it's by this one so get it here you have to select the dependencies copy it and paste it on the form.xml file go and have it here you just paste it over here then it will be applied right so it it, it applies so here you just paste it will be checked here this kind of uh, loading bar will be there here you click on this one it will be applied right it's already there that's why it will be taking error okay it's already there right perfect right. now let's go to the project right first i'm going to go to src main java inside the java we have we, our registration login this is our main method of java this is the main method it is reside on the src main java this is the package it will be default it will be installed right now here first i am going to create the new controller so right click new package this one should be the controller so first what is the controller i am create employee controller employee controller But give the name as here employee control. Sorry. Control. Right. The employee controller has been created. Now we have to add the another uh, thing so DTO an entity, right? Repo service. Right. You have to create this following packages. Second package is DTO. Third one is say entity. entity entity uh depend dto employee controller entity another package we need is uh service after the repo here we are we have to select the your uh, query will be okay repo repo is the part we are coming with the database right so here right the controller it will be managing the project so another one is we have to forget it just a sec config this one should be the must Fix. right perfect okay these are the packages you must create it right now first what i am going to use controller right click here oh, your class you have created class here the class here the class this class here we have created as employee controller right so empty controller now we have to add the annotation this following annotation we have to add it we go to the employee controller rest controller cross origin okay it will be this one should be must when you are connect with the front end application request mapping this is the api we are setting okay this is a restful api so we have to implement the rest controller so this in since spring board how to manage they are they the all the project structure they are implement the annotation so it's simple if this is the restful api so you have to write the at the restful api so you have to write rest controller you have to implement that here after that this one work for the front end part if you have connect the front end okay this, this is a back end you have cross version is must second one third one should be the request mapping why we implement this annotation this annotation we are implement the 
here we are we have to add the restful api request okay so we have to set the path uh, so here like this we have to this is the correct way you add it we have to write like this api which this one we have to write slash version this is employee right employee means this, this is how we have write the request okay right the, the like this here right this one should be the port what is the port you are setting right so we have uh, talk it little bit later on this one we have to understand so far this is must right after that employee controller what i'm going to do is here first i'm going to create the function so how to create the functions first you have to write this like this postman this function right so i'll write here uh, i just copy and paste it so here because it take too much of time to complete it otherwise right so first you have to write postman the postman this is post request postman oh sorry post mapping because we are posting the values when you save the record we are posting the values okay so we are ready post mapping when you get the values from the database that is get mapping so the postman path save the when the request is coming like save here if you write save here when the request is save i already saw this one record will be saved in the database so we have to write a save here so you have to write implement the functions public string save employee body request we have to get the details from the dto we are the employee dto here we haven't created this class so we have to show this red mark right right okay we get the details from where employee dto right now first i'm going to create the entities right so entity after that we have to create the dto right mtd class but select as employee Right. Employee as employee name, so so address, so employee name, username, password. Right. The three fields now. If you want more field, you have to add it. Okay. Employee name, uh, first name, last name, mobile number, age, all the whatever you can add it. Okay. In this example, I have it this three. Okay. If you want, you add it. Right. So yeah, before that, you have set like this. If it is entity, you have set this called annotation entity and table. Right, what is the table you have to create on the database? Right. So here we have to add the you have to call the entities here. This annotation. Okay. So, right. I just copy and paste it. You have to write yourself. Okay. So how to write it? See? Simply have to annotation entity. You have to get it then here. Click on here, get them. Right? You have to like get them here. If you import it, it is coming. Okay, if I if I uh, copy and paste it, it asks red mark because we have to implement the package so here how to implement the package alt class enter then it asks to import the class this is a class inside of the package it will import right okay that's it okay this is how we have implement the annotation okay this is a table name employee why this table name the database table is all the records should be saved in our database table so the table name i have here uh, here I have uh, implemented here as employee. The employee, this this employee name in our database tables will be created. Right. Now here I'm going to create the this following uh, attributes. What are the attributes we want us? So here, just copy it and paste it. I'll be explained. Don't worry. First here ID, right? ID. So here to implement the annotation here ID. Here. So right ID. You get the ID, right? Okay, ID. Right. Uh, after the column, so we have a lot plus entry key, then only the all things are classes I am uh, importing, right? So this is a column. Column, this is a column where in our database. So it will be auto, auto increment employee ID. It's length I given as 45. Generate value, you have set as generation type auto me. When the record is added, the uh, employee ID will be added automatically. So we have to set like this, right? Length I have set it forty five. This is the this this is the uh, this is the uh, attribute I have set at employee ID. This is the column the database column name. This is our form, our uh, restful API. We are sent like this employee ID, right? Now here this one second column I am going to set the employee name. Employee name we have to create in our database table. Employee name look like this. Okay, so here if you want to store here, show here the example. Uh, here, 
right here. The early example I show you, this one. Right in our form field, this RESTful API, we have to write like this. Okay, your form field, you are set, set here, you are right like this. Okay, this is a form field, this is the database we have set it. Okay, All right, that's how we have created. Okay, right, it's so a database, we have created an employee name, given the length, this is the length, this is the employee name, second, uh, third one is a uh, email and password. These are the attributes we have set up, right? So this ID field, so that we have to give the annotation ID. This is a column. This is the auto increment. These three things we have set it to the ID. Rest of the column we have to we have we have only one annotation is there column. We have to given the column name only. What's the column in, in your database? This record should be added. We have to given here. Right. Now let's add the constructor and non uh, parameter constructor and empty constructor and get and set method and string function these are must okay they uh, this all the values we are getting to the outside this is we, we need that function so right click so this one right click you don't write to you no need to uh, type it that's generate okay generate constructor first call things uh, all on shift key down and select all okay you are getting there all the construct values so okay. constructor the values are coming via the constructor okay employee name email password like this right. second one right click generate constructor this is non constructor none the empty constructor after that you have to implement the get and set method right click right click uh, Generate get and set method. Select all the attributes. We need a get and set method. Okay. All my get and set method will be selected. Right. What happened? Okay. Set it. Okay. Right. After that, we need another one. Right click. Generate. We need this one string. Two string method also we need. Click OK. Right. Perfect. This is how we have at the entities. Okay. This is the entity will be calling to the database. Right. Add the data into the database. So here, right now, what I'm going to do is I need, I need a DTO, a DTO part, right? DTO. I'm going to create this. This all things we need only the DTO class, new class, this employee DTO, DTO, right? Employee DTO. Here we need only the things we no need to do. This this all the things we copy it. Just copy this on the on the things. You have to paste it the DTO. Nothing to do with it. Only the values we need. These are all things we now need. Them. We have to cut it. This is only the things. Here we are not creating the table and only the passing the values. So we have to do the DTO also. Like this. Simple. Okay. DTO. This is how we have created the DTO. Employee DTO. Right. The DTO also we have to set the all things. What are things? Right click. Generate, we need a constructor, all the constructor select and okay. After that, we have to select the uh, uh, get and set method and empty constructor. We have to get the empty constructor, none. After that, we have to write the get and set method as well. So, right click, uh, generate, get and set method as well, select all and get and set method as well. Right. After that, we have need a string also. Right click, strings function also need. Generate string. That's it. That's the thing you have got. Okay, perfect. Now, what I'm going to do is now we have a DTO. Now, here if you are, when the customer come here, this employee DTO is there. It's a DTO. Okay, first, what you're going to do is you have to import the class. So, you have to select here. Or enter mean, yeah. I just copy and paste it so that you are coming here like this. Here, when the request the request is coming via DTO, these are the records. Okay, so it 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 goes to the DTO, right? So DTO, so you have to DTO. DTO we have created the uh here. This is the object. We have created the employee object DTO. Right here we have to write, we have to call it here. So this one. So what is the requests are coming when the when the postman is coming to the control? So here, when the request is coming, is save. It's coming to the cust, cust, uh, controller. 
put it here and pass it to here. Okay. So here it go to the it's it's calling the employee service at the employee method. So now we didn't write the employee service and all. So now I'm going to go to create the employee service here. Uh, you are trying to create a class employee service. So here yeah, what's the class employee service? Right, the employee service. Right. So the employee service class. Service. Sorry, employee service is not a class. Sorry for that. This one service like this one new Java class employee service is not a class which is an interface. We are calling this interface. Only we can't do anything, only we have to declare the method only. This interface, right? This interface, right? The interface we have to this one say employee service, right? Employee service. So the employee service we have to call the annotation, auto -air. annotation also we have to call. Right? So how to declare the annotation? This one. Auto -air. Sorry. Here. not here this inside the class right auto where right so we are employee services there so it will be here right employee service the employee service you are right here employee service uh this one here the employee service class the employee service the same name you are at employee service right right now here we have to create the method you don't need to create click on here create method should be there click on this it will be created here okay it automatically create the method you no need to create this one okay right perfect it's working perfect right now what i'm going to do is it's working perfect no problem right now after that what you're going to do is i'm going to select the service i'm going to create the another package which is a impl it's an implementation impl right here we have we have to create another class which is a Employee IMPL, right? Employee IMPL. Select the package, new class. You have to create as employee IMPL. IMPL. You have to create the class like this. Now this IMPL class is created successfully. Now I have to implement the this interface, employer interface, right? So you have to write the key, you have to type implements employee service. You have to get this one, this class. Right? So this class is getting now it, it is not error. It has to implement this method. We only we have to return the method, but we have we just implement the method only. We have to work through this method here, right? So click on here this by uh, bulb icon. Implement this method. This method. Click OK. Right. It is implemented successfully. Right. Now here what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the records into the database. Right. So before that, the, now this is the flow we are working. Control it is throwing the record to service. Service will be service will be passing the record to the repo. So repo also we have to get the repo as well. So you have to write class employee repo. This also the interface. What a class is interface. You have to get the repo interface. Right. Now here what I'm going to do is this interface. I'm going to implement these annotations. What are the annotations? Enable JPA repository and repository. We have to implement these two annotations, which will be managed in the repository part. Right. After that, we have tried to extend, we have tried like this. This class your this interface, you have tried to the extends keyword, extends JPA repository. Here, employee, which is entity. Here, this first one should be integer mean. This is the ID. What's the ID in the entity? What's the type? Say integer type. This is an integer type. You have to write the integer type. Here, integer type. So you have to, what's the ID? It's a primary key. What is the primary key you have set? If it is integer, you have to set here as integer. That's why you have to select as integer. So here, it asks to import the entity. So select this one or enter with import the class. 
but that's it. If you are writing, you just step by step you are writing extend or uh, JP repository employee integer, right? Okay, if I return and explain it, they take too much of time to come to this project. Okay, now here what I'm going to do is that's it. That's the thing you have to write. Okay, that's the thing we have to write. Right. Now let's back to my IMPL. Here I have to uh, call the call our uh, repo. So your repo, you have to auto way art, you have to write here this repo. You write auto way, auto way art. You have to write this repo, this class is repo. You have to write like this. So here it will employee repo. It asks employee the class. Right, perfect. That is perfect. Now what I'm going to do is here, uh, employee and here you have to return the so null. You have to write here. I'll be explaining, don't worry. Just copy and paste it and I'll be explaining, don't worry. Right. Now here what I did here is, right. So here, this class, I have to return the employee. Employee means this entity. Employee class entity. You have to create the object employee. New employee. We have to create the object employee. Right. The employee class. This employee class. We have to use the, this all the properties. Okay. ID should be auto increment. We don't need them. We need employee name, email and password. Right. We have to, we have to type like this. Employee name, pa password. So here the same thing. It will be coming to the employee service here. So the data is coming from the DTO, employee DTO. So this is employee DTO. So employee DTO. So you have to write this employee DTO. So employee DTO, object here, employee DTO, right? It's coming here. Get the details and set into the entity. So the so how to set the entity employee? This entity, we have to create the object employee. This GT object dot get employee. Get employee ID, employee name. So we have another field which is a password. The password should be. What is the password? This encoder, we have to set the hash password. So we have to write the password encoder. So this one, this class also, we have to add this annotation. Okay, so write private password encoder, password encoder. So, so here this one, this class you have to write. Okay, then only we have to add the encode password. So when the, the, the we have we are not set the password uh like normal password you can't set you have to write a security password okay so you have to, you have to call private password encoder password hash password you have to pass encode so you have to write this password encoder encode whatever password you type it will be encoded and save it that's the thing you have to write after that click save button it will return back to the get employee name so okay this is a get employee name so you have to write this get employee name this name, get employee name. employee class there the property why it's not getting get employee name. so you have right the get employee what is the name the sorry we have to implement this class that's why it's there right. employee get employee name right Okay, right, perfect. This up, you'll get it, right? The detail, the employee ID, employee name. This one should be auto increment. This one, employee name, employee address, uh, uh, email address, password. You'll set it and it's called the repo. This repo, repo, employee repo also here. You have to auto wear dot save method. There's in repo, there's a default method. It's save. You have to call this employee object over here. Record is saved. The record is coming via the DTO. It's set into the entity. After that, it's all the record will be saved in the entity object. Entity object you are calling to the repo. Repo, right? It will be saved. The repo is a part where I communicate the database and uh, add the record into the database. After that, after that, it will be returned back to the uh, message employee get employee name. But the employee name you are written here, it will be getting. If you have the ID also passed, your ID also you can get it. Okay, this is the, this is the thing. The record is added. Okay, very simple. Right now, let's save all. Right. Right. Now let's see, go to the resources folder application property. Here we have to configure our database connection. Right. So do you no need this all the source code I provide you? Don't worry. Here the application property. Here I just copy and paste here. The application properties here we have configure our all the database configuration. Okay, so 
Okay, Spring Boot application name. This is our registration or uh, registration login. I just give that project name, right? This is the port where we are we are, we are running the server. So, okay, if you want to change the port, I'm going to change the port of port as 9890. This is the port where my project need to run. So we have to set the port like this. Here JPA Ibernate select at create. So in the first time we have created the database, you have to create. This is this one should be our MySQL driver. You have to specify the MySQL driver. Right. After that, Spring data source. Here your database connection you have given here. This is the port in our local host. This is our database I have created. Uh, whatever name. I'm going to get the name as DB Office. This is a database name I have to create. Create database. If not exit, true. Okay, the simple code. Okay. This is the while you installing the uh, MySQL work patch. Okay, what is the username and password you are given? You have to write like this. Okay, the, you have to the MySQL work batch. If you are not installed by MySQL work batch, you have to install the MySQL work batch. Here we have we have to connect with the uh, databases, right? MySQL work batch. You have to install that. Right? Okay. After that, you have to write this simple JPA configuration. You have to write like this. Okay, this is all the source code I provide you. You just copy and paste it. You have to understand what is what is here. This code only have to work. In. This is a default JPA configuration. When you install the uh, MySQL connection, these are the this is the database I have created. This is the username and password you have right. This is the database I haven't created it. Now I am going to create a database. Okay, so this is simple stuff. Now let's create the database so all things have a delete right here let's run and check whether it's working fine or not uh, uh, go to the controller now let's run the project now you can see here the database is created the table has been all things are here created here create the tables you can see here right so you can see check after that what you're going to do is you have to go to the database section the database you are not doing anything else you have to create the database okay so here click on here database data source here uh, what is the name here we have we, 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 we given application property this is all db office so go to the database here you can see the database click on this data source you have to get the database my is a mysql so local host, uh, username is root, password is root123, database is db office, office, you can check the connectivity, connection success, okay, connection success, right, click apply, okay, now you can have a, you can check. The database this is a database configuration your table here's a table which is an employee these are the following this is all the things related successful right okay right this is how you have created the algorithm right now let's do the uh another thing is we we no need have any problem let test it whether record is added or not right now you can see here the port what is the port you have given here 80 90 is the port okay so if you are not download the postman, you have download the postman, you have type HTTP, you have to select here as a post request. So okay, HTTP slash local host, here you have to specify the port, what is the post you are given. After that, this one should be the API. How to get this API? You have set it here. You can see here, uh, here this is the API, you have set it here. API version employee this v v1 in the version okay this is must this is the efficient way to set the API slash when the request is coming save it goes to the it go, it goes to save method here what does is first get the records from the DTO and in passing to the service service will be passing to the uh, repo okay that's how the flow is working now let's check okay before that we have a do anything else here the config we have to create this configuration part so the password security here we have a separate configure password here this one uh, if you go to the IMPL you can see here we have implement the password encoder 
So we have to add the the config. We have created a package. We have to new add the class. You type config security config. You have to create the class for that purpose. Here we have to give the uh, we have to give we have to import the class. So we have to write like this. We have to talk the bean. We have to set the bean here. Bean password encoder. We have to set this password encoder here. Here we have to import the class. You have to type like this. Okay. Bean password encoder. You have to type password encoder. Right. Okay. Right. You have to type like this. Password encoder. Uh, this one. Okay. Return this password. Okay. So he, then only now you can see and check. Uh, here also you can check here the configuration. You have to write the configuration here. Configuration annotation, you have to write configuration. This annotation. This is the configuration. This is a configuration annotation. Now let's run and check. Now it's working. Now it's working. You can see it is now it's working. Now let's test it whether it's the coding is working or not. Right now, what I'm going to do is uh, we have already seen this is uh, this is our local host. This is a port where we are running our service. So which port? You can go to the project. You can see inside the application property. This is a port we set it. Okay, so local host that post and employee control. This is a URL API version employee. So employee version employee. The save method. You can see the save method. Right, so let's try try on this. Uh, click on this. Put the body here. It's working. Right now, let's go and check it. The database. Double click on this. Here it's working. Okay, the password is will be created here like this. Okay, now perfect. It's working perfectly well. Now, if there are any problem, <coughs> while create this security. So here, go to the main method, registration login application. You have to write like this. Spring Boot, only this annotation will be there. This is the main class, our main class. Here, you have to write this exclude Spring uh, Auto, the Security Auto Configuration class. You have to write like this. You have to get ex uh, exclude. Then it's work, right? Is there any problem while you get it? Right? Okay, you have to implement this one. That's it. That's the thing you have to get. Right. Now, after that, we have to start with the login. Now let's start the login. So first login, uh, the entity also the same entity. So here we have a DTO. We have in login, we have to create the different DTO. New class, this one should be the login DTO. You have to get the login DTO. Right, class. Here you have to write, you have to implement this following method. Here, only. We need only do these two fields. Okay, this DTO go through this fields okay this dto as we have these two fields have M, uh, email and password only we have we, we are checking so then what you are going to do is you have to write first you have to add the constructor so generate constructor hold on shift key down and select both or the empty constructor you have set the empty constructor after that you have get and set method you have generate the get and set method Out of that you have set the string value. Right click, generate string. Two string method. That's it. That's the thing you have to write. Okay. Out of that you have to go to the controller, employee controller. You have to write, you have to implement this one, this method when the request is coming. Right. I just copy and paste it and I'll be explained. Don't worry. This course code I provide you. You have to write post mapping path login. If you type like this, login, it goes to the login function. Okay, right here, this one, you have to write public response entity. You have to write the response. This is a response. You have to get the response, right? Whether uh, password is succeed or not. Okay, you have to write the login function. Request body this detail. You have to import this detail. So you have to write this alt and you have to import the class. Already have. If, 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 if any, Red shown, you have to right click on here, 
plus or tan enter it will be gone okay so here uh, this login message if you have we haven't created this class okay employee service and check it login employee okay so here we have to create the class this one we, we have to create click on this create the log employee service right login it will be created now what you are going to do is here go to the impl so impl section you have to import it here click on here implement the method click the method will be imported here it will be imported successfully now what i am going to do is here we have to log in message the message will be displayed okay so we have to create simply uh, this section response section payload uh, response right so here to write this one message login message so here to write here go hmm, right here what you are going to do is uh, we have to go to here i'm going to create another package select like this one and the package you have to create response response here you have to create the class login response response i get login response so login response now here what I am going to do is here we have to this class we have a we have a two message and status right you have to here also you have to import the get and set method so generate constructor we have two argument constructor we have to pass the empty constructor as well uh, generate empty constructor none after that you have to uh, generate the get and set method after that you have to set one another one thing is two string select this one generate two string method also we have to implement this all things so far right now what i am going to do is this one login response you have to go to the controller this one login response that you have to we have to import the class about login login response right login response right so see the same thing name we have to give one here this is also login response 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 you have to create this response the same thing copy it this one also copy it and paste it over here login response this class use the impl also login response Okay, login and response, right? Login response, right? Login response. So login response. Sorry, login response. Right. Login response. Uh, here yeah, the same thing. I service also. Login response. Right. Perfect. Right. Now what you what I'm going to do is here. I'm going to check it. Right. So how to check it? Uh, IMPL. It's a login checker. Just copy it and paste. I'll be explaining. Don't worry. Okay. Right. Now here, what I'm going to do is. This one, all the things are login response. Right. Here the, here what I did here is, here when the URL coming to the controller, here login, it's, it's goes to get the details only employee, uh, DTO coming this only email and password, passing to this controller, get them, receive them, and pass into the where service employee service login method so it's goes to the login method over here <coughs> okay method here this one will be passing to the implementation here <coughs> now here get the data and you have to check it first you have to create the variable message employee you have to write employee one 
you have to create the employee and object here we have to go and check the uh, repo so repo go to the employee repo here uh, we have these two things we have to copy and this one we have to paste it over here our repo we have the repo here created paste inside here right so in repo you have to write optional employee you have to find one one by in, uh, email and password okay what is the email, password coming from the DTO? You have to pass it here and check it. Okay, this is a simple select story. After that, we have to separately we have to check the email also. Whether the email is valid or not. Find email. Right? So yeah, let's back to our uh EMPL. So here you check here. But you have to check uh repo find email. Here the email is valid. It's it the email is valid email it's go and check here this one if it is not null records here our what is the password you are getting password encode password you have to get the encode password you have to write here boolean password right here write encoder match your start with your match password encode match your right like this and here we have to check it if the username and password valid or not optional employee employee repo find the what is the email i getting and password if it is match it is present mean there is a function which is a present. The pa password is uh, username and password, th those are match login success, otherwise, login failure. Right? Login fail. Okay. Right? Okay, after that, if the ID password not, not match, it will be passing error password not match. If there is in any error of the uh, email, uh, the this email is not valid here. First, you have to check the email first. If the email is uh, not valid, it it will be written the message yes email is not exist okay we have put the message yes right now let's test that now let's test that again we have to run the query and check it right and now i am going to add the new record uh here i am going to add the james we have right james jim gmail here password is this right now let's send Record added. Now I am going to test that through login. Here we have to write login. Right, login. Test whether it's working fine or not. Click send button. Here, record is success. So, here this both record is match. It will be uh, returning the message login success. If there any problem with the email, email not taxes here. You can see here. First, you have to first we validate the email. Then only if the email is exist only, it will be go and check the password. So it will be written email is not exist, right? If their username and password fail, it will be working here. Login fail. So here, if you are writing that here, uh, sorry, but click right, right. Now if you write the password wrong, you can see here password not match. Okay, password not match. Right here is working. So login success so very simple this is how we have make the simple login and uh, we make the login and uh, registration page using the ash password all the source code i provide you thank you for watching my back end part is finished now i'm going to start the front end so i'm going to get started react Let's type on the google search get started react select click on this first link it goes to here i'm going to create the new app of the react so here you have to click on this create new app so you have to type this one mpx create this one this command you have to copy here in e drive i'm going to make the one folder front end react right now here i'm going to install the front end part this one should be the name it as front end right. you have to wait until the, all the things are created successfully you have to wait until the installation installation has been completed right now the react is installation uh, completed successfully you will be you can see the uh, inside this front end react the folder has been created front end here i'm going to inside the folder cd front end App. press enter key here you have to type npm start press enter key 
now your uh, react application is uh, welcome page has been so you will be able to see now you can see this is the welcome page of uh, react okay you can you will have this icon now what i'm going to do is this is the project double click this project i am going to open on the vs code you have to type cmd code space dot press enter key this all the project will be open on the vs code editor like this right perfect yes trust okay now here you will be able to see your project is open on the vs code editor it's a public folder java index.html this is a main page right now this page first i'm going to implement the bootstrap so you have to go to the uh, bootstrap go to the bootstrap style copy them the cd and copy it back it here or paste inside here right that's it now let's save all now now let's back to our uh, src folder here we have we have, we have created the components right uh, the first the components loaded app.ds this is a file which is loaded now i'm going to remove these lines only we have write hello world so here each one so type hello here this is the page which will be loaded first right so this logo we no need them let's save all and check here this hello is displayed okay this hello is displayed perfect it's perfect right it's perfect right this this style also we no need them get rid of these lines right the CSS also we no need them, right? Just in this. Here, now I'm going to do the rest of the things. First, I'm going to create a new component. So create the SRC folder, right click. I'm going to create a new folder as components. Inside the components folder, I'm going to create first component, register component. Register. Right? Register component. So register dot JSX. The first component I am going to create. Second one, I'm going to create login component. So login dot react extension is JSX. Third component, I'm going to create as home component. So home dot JSX, right. We have created three different component, right. First component, I'm going to create uh, register JSX. So what you're going to do is here. Uh, first, the app dot JS, this is the file. The same common file I just copy and paste it over here. Get registered out here. So only the name you have to change it as so this one should be register. Register. This one you have to this function you have to export outside. You have to type here register. Right. Here we are here to implement the HTML. Right. So here HTML, here you have a logic, you have to write the logic. So HTML, okay, I'll write the HTML. Uh, HTML file right here. Right now, here you can see the registration. The registration you can ask simple form. I will explain. Don't worry, this code. I'll be explaining. Don't worry. Don't worry about this one. I copy it. I will paste it over here. Un unwanted spaces. I'm going to get rid of this. These lines we no need them. Right. I'll be explaining. Don't worry. Right. You can see here. First, the due tag started here. Due tag is closed it here. The second due tag, tag is started here. This is a due container. Okay, here we have a implement the simple card design. We we give, gave the heading as student registration. Here we have a simple form design. I have implemented the small form design. This form design consists of first field is a name. The first name. This is an employee name. You have to get the employee name. The first field. The simple bootstrap. Okay. Employee name. This is one input field. This is the employee. Okay, the employee name. Right. Now here okay, this is this is the things it's a React. Okay. I have explained this one in few minutes. However, the second field is a email. Okay, the simple uh, HTML. Okay, email field. It consists of one input field. Third one is a password. This is a password input field. Okay, you can see it is a password. It's a password input field. 
this one should be the in enter the email right okay now here when you click the submit by uh, click save button the button it has a one one click method which is a save when you enter the when you uh, when you fill the form and click save button it goes to the method which is a save method right so now let's come to these points what is the purpose we are writing like this okay now what you're going to do is here in registration uh, we have to have this one these things Right now here in register here we have to maintain with the state if we are store the value and get the uh, get it stored into the database we have to maintain with the state okay the react also maintain with the states okay the here first we have state first state we have a three input fields so we have to create three states here you can see here state one two three the first state should be employee name second is a email third is a password so this one here you can write value this is employee name it's a on change event set employee name here what you are doing what is the name you are type on this particular text field it will be get this set name it will set the name into this function this this function you have to set it over here this it is given to here right this name the same thing email also set email we have, we have created the function here in on click what is the value you are type on the email it coming and set the value over here right it set the value here and given to here the password also the same thing it will does what is the password you are setting it get the password and it will be passed into here so these are things three things we have to do it react right after that after done the stuff when you click save button it goes to the action method which is save this is assigning function right so event it will be we have to write event prevent default you have to write then then only if you have implement this function we will be able to click otherwise if you want click right. after that we have to write a try catch block within the try catch block we have to write this code avoid this one this is the library which will be manage the uh, restful api request this is a restful api request we, we will be getting from the uh, string book so we have to download the particular library exosius this is important this library should be important right we have to download this library then only we will be able to uh, do the things right it is working right it's downloaded successfully now we have to implement the above that these things okay now here what you're going to do is i want to implement this one state and this okay here first you have to import the class use state okay you have to implement the use state class it is reside on the react package is default uh reside on the react package which is a use state this one we have to implement it over here then only we will be manage the states right after this is the api this api already we have tested into the postman it is working fine here we already we show the postman this request here right this is we have given here after that employee name we have set this as an employee name this is these fields are database fields okay these fields postman these are our values this value we are set it from here where this is the form values employee name email and password we have to get it here we have to pass it here and it goes along with this request if the all things are correct student registration successfully we have to get the message that's it that's the thing we have sorry employee we are just employee it's employee registration successfully that's it that's the thing you have to write okay right that's the thing we have to write uh, employee registration successfully right now let's test that whether it's going fine or not save all uh, now this one i'm going to test it uh, put into here we have to call this function registration register this company are called register it implemented here now let's save all and check it back 
what happened we can't resolve the xrcs in the front really i have typed it npm install xrcs only so you type along with save then the problem is solved now let's back to the browser and check here now you will be able to see the registration page now here i'm trying to register new user let me check whether it's working fine or not uh james jim uh one password one two three click save save button employee registration successfully now let's back to our spring boot application and check it here james jim one james here ash part was also generated successfully it's working perfectly right now our registration part is successfully completed now let me go through the uh, login so what you're going to do is uh, back to our project here there is the another component which is jsx login here here what i'm going to do the same thing this have got js the same file copy it and paste it over here this one you have to make it as login this one also login and put login here we have do the html part here we have tried the log logic part so logic but i just go here first i'm going to copy this login the same thing same html only the different is that is so the simple html okay so the only the different is this here this is a container simple boost of container row here we are we have added the adding login here after that your row we have a column size you are given here you have write the simple form design you have get this from from the bootstrap implementation form right here we have to email this one field email address input field here what is the email you are type it here it stores this email uh, event uh, target value what is the email you are type it here it is stored to store here right the password what is the password you are type it here it it will be uh, uh, set it here this password right this password is set into this uh, uh, function this email is set into this function what happened is already I, I explained okay when you click submit button when you click the login button it goes to the login function so here now let's go to the this code I just copy it back to here I paste it over here right now here you can see here what is the email you are typing here this text box it will be set it here what is the password you are type it here it is at this function now here when you click this button it goes to the it will be set the your email and password over here okay it set the your email and password over here uh, before that i have to implement these three things so yes the restful api overall you have to implement that and again you have to install this one okay uh, react router dom here then only you will be able to access the routes okay so you have to write npm install you have to type react router dom that's it then only we have to we have to uh, manage the routes okay if you, if you are not installed this one you can't manage the routes right the route class has this this things use navigate right okay now what i'm going to do is when you click the login button just go here and go to this particular url and check if the username and password correct or not it get that this one should be our postman this one this email and password okay so database is there this one should be our form fields here you have set the name email you have set the email this is a password you have set it here what's the password your email and password what's the password you are typing here it it set into this this function it set it email set it this function it getting here and check it whether it's working fine or not if it is correct whatever what you do, uh, do here is first you have to check here you can see here i am putting to the uh res this means we have get the request the username and password get the request the request we are getting here here you have to in in my backend we are implemented a message okay, this is a message you are implemented message this message equal if it is not set it email is not exist 
if you get the message yes email is not exist uh, alert message to display email not exist if the login successful message we have get it it passing to the home page if there any problem with uh, if, if there any problem in problem it will be display the message here we have set it to three errors right this all things you are setting to the or back end you can see here employee imp you are setting these all things here login success fail password do not do not match here employee user. that's how you have set it here right you are getting the message as well right that's the thing you have done it now let me check whether it's working fine or not uh save all right now let's let's because before that we have to go to the app.js here your maintain as a route then only it will be working successfully so routes how to do the route in uh, react here we have to write like this you write browser routes you write a browser route routes it is coming from the class which is a you have to implement the first one thing is this first you have to write this one import browser routes routes from this class then you have to implement the browse router you have to close the tag browse router route routes okay, how many routes are there you have to first one if, you have, if the route is come slash it scores the home page if there's slash register it scores register page slash it scores the login page okay you have to write like this okay that's the thing you have to write now we have to implement these pages right so we have to implement this program at home but given we ask this decided so you have to decide the home page here this one is all things you are getting get them so you have to this one you have to so type home it's not here to give the path manually otherwise it's not coming here you have to give the path right so you have to give the path already done here here these three things your register is in the components register the login is also from register login uh, yeah two times you have to type here this register one time you have to okay uh, this home also this home from the home components here Right, so the home we have this uh or remove this this component here. So that's why it show the error. So we have right home. That's it. Right. That's this is the path. This is how we have access the routes. Now let's save our and check it back. Uh now you can see cannot resolve uh, the problem here. The thing is the not the problem. The components you have just copy this rename. The same name we have to put it over here. This is also components. The component that's our error. Now let's save our and check it back again. Here it's working now. Now let's type the username and password. Right. So what is the username? Uh, you have to write this one. Kiss at gmail dot com. So type kiss at gmail dot com. Password one two three click it goes to the page successfully the page is there now if you are let's go and this page same thing i'm going to this one cop, sorry copy it paste it over here when we only need the this one should be the home get this component and paste it over here we don't need this one only we have display the message h1 home only the message you display over. That's the text we have to show it. Right now, let's take it back. Okay, what is the error? Here we have a home.jsx. We have to import this one, this component. That's the error. Now let's save all and back it to our browser. Now it's again we have to log in. Uh, I'm going to register a new user. You have to write register. It's successfully got the register control. You have to write uh, Peter. Employee name peter at gmail.com. Peter at gmail.com. Password 1212. It's saved successfully. Now I'm going to log in the user. Peter at 123. 1212. Oh, yeah, 1212 has 
another password you have to wrong password you have type email password do not match email you have to type is email not to exist now you have to type the correct password and email if you want to it successfully go there it's working perfectly well i hope you guys have understood so far thank you for watching